Getting 3D printer filaments to your printer's hot end reliably is a necessity in FDM 3D printing, but this can get surprisingly complicated, especially when it comes to more technical materials. So I designed this to help using the power of magnets. With a bit of post-processing, you can have a way of getting your filament from container to printer that is easy to operate and keeps an airtight seal so your materials arrive ready to be melted. Hi, I'm Fneb, and welcome to my Goblin Nerd Cave. When my Prusa i3 Mark II died earlier this year, I replaced it with this, a Chidi Tech X Plus 3. I'll spare you the video length rant on my opinions of this machine and simply say fixing its foibles got me back into 3D printing as a hobby and not purely as a tool. It opened up options for more technical materials, and to help with the higher levels of toxic gases they produce, I made Mafichit, the modular air filter using cheap IKEA things. There are improvements for that on the way, sensors and alternate carbon filter options, but let's look at a different issue in the meantime. I wanted a way of moving filament around that kept things airtight so I could print things like nylon without worry. But I don't like using the PC4 tube connectors. Fine for mostly permanent connections, but I find attaching them so frustrating. I hate these jerks, get out of here. There are magnetic tube connectors around but there's no airtight seal, and some of them use an odd number of magnets per connector. That means they only have one correct orientation and direction, and I am too spoiled by USB-C to want to go back to that. I nearly remixed this connector, itself a four magnet remix of this popular three magnet connector, but it didn't have the types of connector I wanted, nor did I have the magnets it suggested, so I decided to just start from scratch. I wanted a magnetically connected way of moving filament around, so I made one. This is McWomfa, the magnetically connected way of moving filament around. Fully printable without supports, it uses two 15mm diameter disc magnets to hold the connector in place. Two means it's reversible, and 15mm magnets have a significant amount of holding force. The most informative paper on how magnets work I could find is by Bruce, Utzler and Clark entitled Miracles. But even this left me without a conclusive understanding of the subject, but suffice it to say that more magnet equals more strong. The pockets for these magnets let you choose how thick a magnet to use, but I suggest 2mm thick magnets. The magnet pushes in from the rear rather than the front, which not only gives more print bed contact and stops magnets pulling themselves out, but means there's a thin cushion of plastic to prevent magnets crashing into each other. And the little nubbins in the hole should let you press fit them in most cases. The special source for McWomfer is this. It's a mechanical keyboard o-ring. I had some lying around and they turned out to be perfect. Four millimeter inner diameter, 2.5 millimeters thick, made of squishy silicone. I bought just over a hundred for three quid from eBay. They'll stick out from the surface slightly, so the pressure from the magnetic connection will focus on these. With the PTFE tube glued directly to the inside of the O-ring, we get an airtight seal between the tubes, regardless of how porous the 3D print comes out. The other special thing is a zero flute chamfer bit, so we get a cone on the end of the PTFE tube. This guides the filament between the two connectors without catching and lets it flare out at the end for closer glue contact with the O-ring. Like the video, like the projects, like, comment, subscribe, all, all the things, do, do them, please. Thanks, bye. So, how to make it. Print out the parts you need. I suggest PETG or ABS for this. PLA will work, but as it is brittle, magnets may not press fit quite so cleanly and you'd risk the connectors breaking if they hit each other too hard, and creep may damage them over time. You may get better quality doing print by object rather than print by layer, but otherwise there are no special considerations. There are types for different mounting situations, and these end caps help you keep things sealed when shut, and are easy to pick up thanks to the wings. You can put a zip tie or the like through this loop if you want to make sure a cap connector is always on hand for your most precious filaments. Push your first 15 by two millimeter magnet into the recess. If your print comes out with too small a hole, then trim down the nubbins a bit. And if it's too loose, then use a spot of glue. 
Put in the second magnet with the other polarity. You can find this easily by finding which face is attracted to the first, then making sure that face goes in to the second pocket. Proper assembly of the tube is a bit trickier, but the result is worth it. Get your tube, push it through, and put the O-ring in place. Use a zero flute chamfer bit by hand to make a cone in the tube. By hand. PTFE has a low coefficient of friction, so if you tried holding it whilst using a drill to chamfer it, you could easily slip and you start painting it red. PTFE is soft enough that you can cut it by hand. I tried using a craft knife and the result was really uneven, whereas a zero flute chamfer bit cuts smoothly and a bit of pressure can help flare out the cone. Now comes gluing. I suggest high viscosity superglue. It'll help fill gaps more than liquidy stuff, and you'll get a longer working time to make sure everything is in its right place. Put some on the outside of the cone so it can glue to the O-ring, and some a bit further back so it can glue to the for body. Then slowly slide it in so that the outer edge of the cone is just at or before the narrowest part of the O-ring. And the O-ring is fully seated in the for body. Wipe away any glue, then test while it's still setting. I basically just covered the Mokwamfa end with a finger or a bit of spring steel, then tried blowing into the tube to see if I felt any air coming out. All being well, it's now done. If any glue dries on the o-ring, you should be able to just flake it off with a fingernail. For the end cap variants, just coat the area with a gob of glue, then put an o-ring in place. The glue will hold the o-ring and keep a seal over the rest of the printed surface. I've got several dry boxes and a whole cupboard too that I can pipe filament from. Quite a few of the boxes I got some time ago and best suited for horizontally held spools. And this spool holder by CT3D, designers of the Benchy, that I printed years ago is too tall for these containers. I can't even find the model files online anymore. So I made Lophosh, the low profile horizontal spool holder. It uses one 608 bearing to carry most of the weight and the outer ring stops things wobbling around. PETG has a low coefficient of friction, so this is a nice fit for this. And I made this fully 3D printed guider that you can mount a McQuamfa directly on. I've also made this less low profile one that works great for heavier spools, thanks to the more bearings. Neat. Step files are available for all models if you want to add a McWamfa to any other projects. But there are already versions for mounting to food container dry boxes and the like. M10 threaded versions mean you can use M10 hardware to hold it in place. Don't have a bunch of M10 nuts spare? Print some, or use a straight shank version instead. And if you want the connection to be at an angle, there are versions of both M10 and straight shank connectors at 15, 30, 45 and 60 degrees with matching pressure plates to help M10 nuts apply pressure correctly. To maintain a good airtight seal, I suggest using silicone sealant. Cheap stuff from a hardware store is fine. 3D prints are not exactly known for being airtight due to how 3D printing works, so it's easy to just bypass the issue. Hence the O-ring, hence the sealant. Drill a 10 mm hole in your dry box, put an assembled McWamper in place, then goop in a bit of sealant, which will fill the rest of the drilled hole. Attach the M10 nut so it's holding everything as wanted, then ideally goop a bit more sealant around so there's a layer from box to tube, stopping any moisture coming in through the 3D printed McWamper body. For my filament cupboard, I did things a little differently. I made holes in the shelf and put some silicone sealant around so that these polycarbonate plates can attach to here with the screws embedded into the shelf. I drilled two four millimeter holes in the plate for PTFE tubes to pass through using a quickly designed drill guide for a 45 degree hole. I used a cut operation in my slicer on a McWamfer so there was a shortened version with a flat surface. Assembled it, then glued it onto the plate. Hooray! This cupboard won't necessarily be perfectly airtight, but it should be pretty good for general use materials to live in. And there you go. You can now take filament from your dry box straight to the printer and change between sources easily. Let me know what you think in the comments. Subscribe for more projects. For now, I'm Fneb. Thank you for watching.